Captain. Hey, Captain. I'm in space. I never thought I'd be able to say that. That's not the point. This halfway just knocked out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get two with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. I need a drink. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you... The guy insulted my Rizzo's rangers, all right? You can't just insult my rangers and expect to get away with it. So, of course, I decked him with a tossball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair-weather fan? Only the finest group of tossball players ever to take the field. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounge together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't that captain of the unreliable? You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone, pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Just arrived? Head over to Customs. Wheeler needs to process you. Customs and inspection, right this way! Identification, please. You've got a ship, but you've never visited Groundbreaker. <laughs> you must have just dusted off from one of those dirt-side outposts. Sure did. And now we're in space! Well, welcome to Groundbreaker. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it. But what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. You take the starch out of them, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay, tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. A handful of SAM cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? You noticed, huh? What can I say? We're passionate folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments any time we like, and that terrifies them. It's a delicate balance, right? We could cancel their freighter's docking privileges in retaliation, but where'd that lead us? They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. 
But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing base. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Sure thing. He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Sure thing. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board, that is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. Relative to the board holdings? Not really. But there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. Are you pulling my leg? You must be one of them long-haul freighters from outside the colony. Well, I won't hold it against you. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That group's what we now call the board. Sitting around drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Yep, Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board... Glad to help. Commandant Sunita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. Happy to help. That's my job, after all. You're real good at it, too. Well, thank you, miss. It's nice to be recognized. Yep. Can we move this along? I have a certain, uh, matter I'd like to attend to, Captain. All right. Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera. She'll set you right. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker's not the most hospitable port in the colony. Defense. You'll find her in the rest and go, on your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Be seeing you. In trouble today? Not... Hey. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Chief Tennyson don't generally hire outsiders for station jobs. But you could try asking at Sublight Salvage. They got an office on the far end of the promenade deck. Anything else I can help you with, ma'am? They're run by Miss Hagen. Half the tramp captains and contractors in the system have worked for her. I ought to warn you straight off. Scuttlebutt says some of the jobs they do aren't exactly above board. Downright anti-business, if you catch my meaning. Let's say there's been times when I heard somebody needed a thing. And somebody else had such a thing, but they weren't inclined to sell. Now let's say the one who had the thing suddenly found theirs missing, and the one who needed got one. If anyone asks, Sublight says it got salvaged from an old wreck. Case closed. If anybody could prove them criminals, the board would have put their foot down a long time past. They always got, uh, what do they call it? Deniability? Something gets nicked or someone turns up dead, Sublight says, 
Hey, independent contractor, not our responsibility. But everyone knows what they're doing, top to bottom. Against is a strong word. Let's say that if you need something the board ain't inclined to sell, you might look to Sublight to get it. You might pay Sublight a shitload of bits for it, but that money gets passed on to their contractors, so in the end, it's still business. You must admit, there is a beauty to the order of it. Everything operates within the constraints of the grand plan, even organized crime. People do what they gotta to get by. Oh, sure, sure, sorry. Gets a mite boring at this desk, you know. Then I get to chatting too much, and Commandant Sunia's gotta reprimand me again, and... Oops, doing it again. Sorry. Oh, don't worry. Captain's real understanding. Can't speak for the captain, but I'm used to listening to folks drone on about their pointless, depressing lives. Awful generous of you, listening to me like this. Chief Junlei Tennyson. She runs the ship. Does a real great job of it, too. Her family's worked on it for, gosh, since it was built, I think. Back before the crossing. What's she like? Is she a good boss? Good as she can be, I guess. What with all the troubles Groundbreaker's facing. She could stand to lighten up, I suppose. But she tries her best to do right by folks, and that's what matters. N no reason. Don't you trouble yourself over it, Captain. That was very convincing, miss. I think your captain almost bought it. Sure is, but she makes it look easy. She's real competent, our chief, even if she ain't real friendly. This is the security desk, ma'am. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sunita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. Less than there used to be. Fewer freighters passing through these days. I spend some shifts just listening to the wireless. There's been a whole heap of good advertisements lately. Sometimes I tune in just for those. Search me. I mean, don't search me, because that's my job. <laughs> Get it? Uh, I reckon you... Sure, and stuff from outside the system, too, off the uh, interstellar freighters. That's why we also have so many armed Mardettes on duty here. That'd be awful weird. On account of you should be locked up back here, too, then. We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not... Uh, we just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. All right, I, I guess... In and out, though. Just try not to do any shady stuff. I'd like to keep my job. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Chief Tennyson doesn't often hire freelancers, like I told you, but she might be amenable now. Anything else I can help you with, ma'am? That's what I'm here for, ma'am. I'm not so good at filing. Mix up first name and surname one, two, seven times. Well... Folks are liable to start taking your filing privileges away. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty posting, I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time nor loitering. Got a hot one for you. Captain Gunner McRed. Just 26 hours old. Uh, the posting, that is. Not the criminal. <sighs> Allegations include several counts of flying under the influence, carrying open alcoholic containers, failure to pay docking fees, resisting arrest, and assaulting not one, but two officers. Kicked one right in the kneecap while he poked the other in the eyes. McRud's lucky we're too backlogged right now to hunt him down ourselves. But if our resources clear up and we catch him before some contractor does, I fully plan to lock him in ISO with them two officers he wounded. Thinking he won't like that one bit. Swerving in the air was more like it. Then he crashed hard into the dock and tumbled out of his ship and fled on foot. Spilled Rizzo's Violet Spectrum vodka all over Officer Hartley. An affront of its own, considering none of us are approved for anything higher than Green Spectrum. Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the legwork. Oh, I will. Soon as the Chief approves the personnel reorg required for a bounty dispatch. So, in about three to seven weeks. 
You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head, or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck and skip speed to you. The outlaw scientist fella, right. The board's had it out for him for ages. If you have an inkling of the where's or what for's of his location, Udon Bedford would surely like to hear it. He'll be in the board offices on the promenade. No doubt dreaming up new ways to be a pain in my ass. He's the board's watchful eye here on Groundbreaker. To the board, yeah. You've read his wanted poster. Whole list of things to get their unders in a wad. But he's never done nothing to Groundbreaker, so I've no problem with him. We keep the poster up to keep the peace is all. Do I look like your gossipy best friend? While I'm on post, I take my duties real serious. I would have no qualms whatsoever escorting you to a cell. Understand? Now let's not start a fuss. I'm just trying to do my job, and I can't do it while chit-chatting with you. We're the security force here on Groundbreaker. Started back before the crossing, you know. The original force was made up of a Marine detachment from the 77th Marine Expeditionary Unit, Trailward Fleet. Folks started calling us Mardettes because it was easier to say. Guess it stuck. Hunt. I've been ruminating on it, and I decided, if you ain't killed McRed yet, I want you to hurt him a little before you do. Nothing excessive, mind you, but the scoundrel deserves a light beaten at least before he kicks off. This is it. Security. I can check the departures registry to find out which crew chi- I mean, the scholar shipped in and out with. I find myself marveling at the- something vexing you, Captain? There it is. Just yank the drive, and I'll do the rest. Now that we have the... Got it. His name is... Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bitcard he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? Oh, it's nothing. I suppose I really didn't have much faith in actually finding him. Was a bit of a long shot, wasn't it? I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things. As you were. Huh? Dang, that's impressive! If you got a complaint, file it at security. <clears throat> Funny at the crew, but they toss folks out the airlock if they don't like your face. This is Halcyon Dunes. Somebody was trying to fix this up, but looks like they ain't been here in a long while. Poor old sweetie.
Now... Well, I don't say this lightly, but... That is a work of sheer universal beauty. Be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. Move along. Lemons. Lemons. If you're not crew, you're little people. Ooh, can we rent an upstairs room? How do you do? And, uh, welcome to the rest and go. We used to be the go and rest, but folks never knew when to leave. Sorry. Business has been slow. Anything to occupy the time. Of course, most of our supplies come and go through merchants. Company ships and salvage runs are the only traffic we tend to get. I try and steer clear of that creepy fellow in the moon mask. If there's a cost to being a company man, he paid it in spades. Fine, as long as the board keeps its grubby mitts to itself. Chief Tennyson holds the ship together, the promenade holds our economy together, and Sublight is the shoddy jewel in our rusty old crown. Our local garbage collectors. That Lilia Hagen never met a debris field she didn't like. She freely admits she planted her roots in Groundbreaker to escape board oversight, but I think there's more to it. She's unusual in the head, that one. Our chief Tennyson has an independent streak, same as her mother and grandmother who rode this ship on the crossing. There's a reason the board's embassy is a glorified shoebox. While Junlei Tennyson lives and breathes, Groundbreaker remains free. Oh, you can't miss her. Right behind you, number two. First unit on the left, or second unit from the right, depending on which direction you count from. Was I doing again? This your room. I'll just move along. Wait, this is almost certainly my room. That's my Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Might want to acquaint yourself with Junlei Tennyson, Groundbreaker's chief. She's been trying to get a handle on this heat problem we've got. You'll find her fretting in engineering. I'd say... Yes, dearie? Ain't that just a treat? So, you know Edna, over in engineering? On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway, and Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. K 
can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. Edna didn't seem to think so, and I trust the dear girl's judgment. Well, maybe not in men, but she knows her comms. So like as not, someone's been down there recently. And if someone set up shop in Roseway, I'd wager they got something to hide. Quite the opposite, I believe. Nothing terribly secret about gunfire, is there? If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. My goodness, aren't you quick on the uptake? I like that. Should you find yourself responding to a certain distress call, and in so doing find yourself in possession of certain valuable corporate secrets, well, then we ought to have a chat over a pot of tea and my famous cookies. Law bless your atoms. Here's a copy of the SOS recording complete with the coordinates. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. I found a handsome ceramic mandapillar at a salvage auction last week. Not in here. Or what do you want then? My hard-earned wisdom? Ask the common folk, and they'll tell you it's on account of all the monsters on Monarch desperate to gobble you up. Because that's what the board tells them, you see. I think they made some fool mistake that would make them look bad to the rest of the colony, and they're trying to hide the evidence. Oh, a little of this, a little of that. I buy and sell items that require discretion to dispose of. Knickknacks. Curios. I also knit throw pillows stuffed with the hair of famous tossball players. But that's more of a passion project. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. That's half the reason I make them, my dear. But that's not what you wanted to talk about, is it, dear? Groundbreakers radiators. Been neither fine nor dandy for weeks now. Miss Junley's supposed to be getting them fixed, but the board's determined to get in her way. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, looking for ways to bring us to heel. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, ma'am. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. That's right, dearie. The only independent station in the colony. That's us. Though for how long, I can't say. That all depends on Miss June Lay. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running. Work. No, ma'am. Go right ahead, sweetheart. Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Take that darling ship of yours down to Roseway, where that distress signal I told you about came from, and ferret out some tasty corporate secrets for old Gladys. Shouldn't be too tough for a lass like you, I'd think. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. This is Halcyon Noon. Couldn't pay me to visit Monarch. No, I'd probably get my face.
that's clever. Seeking relief from the heat? Till June Lei gets those radiators fixed, I've got the next best thing. A new face. What's your pleasure, stranger? The radiators, they're fucked ten ways to Sunday. And we're all sweating buckets wondering when the powers that be are gonna get around to fixing it. Couldn't say, and I wouldn't be pouring drinks professionally if I could. All I know is we're cooking in our own juices here and it's only gonna get worse. Engineering, Chief Junlei Tennyson to be precise. She runs this heap, best she can anyway. Don't know what's got her dragging her heels, but I wish she'd hurry it up. They're supposed to gather up all the heat the systems generate and vent it into space. Instead of the heat going where it ought, though, it seems to be blowing straight down the promenade. Weeks? I lost track. Too law damn long. That's not for me to say. But if you're feeling the urge toward helpfulness, you can find Chief Jun Lei in engineering. There's nobody who knows more about the station's guts. Any system you could name? June's crawled around inside and made it better. She doesn't come around here often, though. Don't see her as much of a drinker. Too straight lace for that. I hear tell some folk down in the townships are getting offered early retirement. Who'd think of such a thing? What would you do with all the time? Only the usual. Marauders all over space. You ever wonder how folk who can't figure the bleeding edge technology of a spoon can manage to get ships into space? Some big shot down in Byzantium's holding auditions for a new adventure serial. So yay, another six of those next season. Don't think I heard anything new lately. There's nothing you need and everything you want. You're fast. Thank you, stranger. Shit, ain't that a relief? You have no idea how good the air on Groundbreaker smells until you've been trapped in a tiny bathroom with an overflowing toilet. Thanks again, friend. Time stood still. I was aware of nothing but the smell. Ugh, could have been days. Ah, shit. That means I haven't clocked out in days. Song is gonna have my ass for wage theft. What usually happens on this partially pressurized rust bucket? Something broke. Well, actually two things broke. First, the damn toilet overflowed. When I came to clean that up, the damn door decided to close and lock on me. You're gonna shake me down after I was trapped in a shit-covered bathroom? Is that how it is? Fine. Here's every bit I've got. That enough for you? Or do you want my shit-covered clothes as well? I will. I will preserve my dignity. No one can take that away from me. <laughs> Impressive as always.
wondering what they do with their waste. I guess they just chuck it down here. Uh, how about I stay up top? You know, keep watch, okay? Great work. Hey, how'd you get back there? You know that sound when you've snapped on an injector clip? Ah, <sighs> that's how you know your weapon loves you back. I got a full line of weapon modifications I'd be happy to show you. Why, it gets you the weapon best suited for your lifestyle. All the better for performing a little percussive maintenance. Self-improvement, including one's weapons, is always a worthy endeavor. Take your basic Deadeye assault rifle. Perfectly serviceable. But what if you like finesse? Slap a scope and silencer on that bad boy. Bunker down in a bush someplace and pop off heads. What if you like getting in close and making a lot of noise? Extended ammo magazine and a barrel heat sink to bump up rate of fire. Right here for a start. I got a fair selection. Modified weapons are my specialty. Only takes a bit of elbow grease and a spot of engineering know-how. Most ships have a workbench near the cargo hold. Ours is in engineering. You could take your new toys over there if you feel like tinkering. Uh, no and yes. When you install something, it pops in there real nice, but if you want to replace it, the originals tend to snap like plastic toys. A what? Sorry, hon. Here at Bell's Shells, we just don't discuss impolite topics, and W-A-R-R-A-N-T-I-E-S tops the list. So, what can I get you? I know she's in there, Mpuru. You can't keep me out of there. Please. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Mpuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. <laughs> yeah, if she's in the morgue. Because I'm a doctor, I know what illness looks like. And Jessie was looking as sleek as a sprat in the Tyleritos last time I saw her. And anyway, if someone suddenly comes down with a calamitous disease, it doesn't stay secret for long around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, we're on a space station. No one gets that kind of luxury. Besides, who wouldn't want to see... You say that like it's weird. Like I said, Jessie did me a favor and now I owe her one. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid, that's all. Anyway, be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Good luck getting to Jessie. And better luck if you do. It's a real piece of work. What seems to be the problem? Not without dispensation from Chief Jun Lei, I fear. Supplies are hard to come by out here. We don't have the ability to manufacture our own medical supplies here on Groundbreaker. Regrettably, we are dependent on the board for such mundane items as bandages and antibiotics, as well as more critical resources like adequately trained staff. We'd nearly signed a supply agreement with Anticleos, but they demanded we only use their branded drugs, and that's simply not tenable. If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Take care. Can't say I've seen you before. 
I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Sure is. You need a deft hand to straighten a busted nose or sparkle up those not-so-pearly whites? I'm your gal. Of course, there's not much cosmetic improvement going on at the moment, not without my mechanicals. Where the law is Irian anyway? I'm expecting our delivery fellow to stop through with medical supplies and service auto mechanicals. Name's Captain Irion. A brave idiot with a penchant for getting himself delayed. Sometimes by dates, usually by bandits. Surgery mostly. Medical personnel are difficult to come by on Groundbreaker. The board won't let their doctors and nurses station here, and they own all the medical schools. If we can't hire their people, we can't hire anyone. Everyone on staff here on Groundbreaker was trained by me or Idris. We're good, don't get me wrong. But we've only two heads between us, and we don't know everything. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Around and I'll begin to think you're here for me. What can I do for you? You have yourself a day then. You're sure this is perfectly safe? I'd rather not die early of an infectious disease myself. I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So I hold up here to lay low. Oh, laws. Wait, don't gut me and skin me yet. Please, talk to Bedford. Tell him I can pay, um, a part of it. And I'm a useful person to know. Just ask Ellie. Surely you wouldn't drag me before him. I'm dreadful contagious. I just know if I face him, I'm dead. What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. You'd let a poor, ill woman get disappeared by the board? Awfully cold-blooded of you. Though I admire your backbone. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back, I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. Udon was my buyer for when I'd acquired the diamond. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life, and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. Udom Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? You're sure no one followed you? Is it all clear, or am I still a wanted woman? Oh, that's just how Ellie is. According to her, she don't need no one or anything to get by in life. She can deny it all she wants, but we know each other. More than just as passing acquaintances. We've helped each other. Sometimes we even like each other. Lone pirates don't live too long, and it ain't weak to have a friend or two. Ha! <laughs> oh, you should ask her that. She'll love it. 
By which I mean she'll probably have an apoplectic fit. You're sure no one followed you? Any word on Jessie? Let's just say she did me a favor and now I owe her. So did you find her or what? Good luck. The board's got an office on the promenade just before engineering. You can't miss it. I'm sorry about the heat. Chief Dennison will get the radiators fixed soon. Of course, this heat sure makes a zero-G brew extra refreshing. It's an ale that's good for what ails you. Oh. And it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. A lot of slogans to keep track of. And sometimes I forget. chatter on my way in. Seemed to come from Monarch? What can I do for you? Need some Adreno? It's good for you. Spacer's promise. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Anything and everything. Whatever you want. We got it. And when you need a replacement, we got that too. Just the opposite. Spacer's choice items are always new. Hot off the shelves, because customers just can't stop buying new stuff. Oh, sorry. I got the line wrong. Y you want me to do it again? Spacer's choice items are always new. Hot off the shelves, because customers just can't stop improving their lives with our fine products. You could go broke buying overpriced Aramid gear, or you could buy from us at a much more reasonable rate. That's why you should get a backup for three. Become a frequent buyer. Join our Friendship Rewards program. Program currently unapproved in Alpha, rewards and friendship pending. Heard of it? My orientation Aetherwave showed that famous Saltuna cannery, which I'm sure smells as good as it looks. That's true. Yeah. I hope they're gonna be okay. That's a spacious choice, Spear. Take what you have, polish it up, and make the best of it. So, what can I get you? Some soap? Everyone loves soap. Everyone will love you for using it, too. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our Consumer Care Headwear Division. You would never ask if you knew what it's like in here. I mean, why anyone can be a Spacer's Choice Consumer Relations Choice Specialist. Just keep your nose clean and aim for the moon. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's Choice! Chase the freedom! Oh, I'm having a stellar day. And not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. I can see all of the top quality merchandise in the spacer's choice catalog, which is available here at a reasonable price. Spacer's choice regrets that we don't sell toothpaste at this time, but we're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. Sprat wash, mouth wash, and mantle floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. Don't miss out on these deals. You'll find none like them on all a groundbreaker. Oh, trouble sleeping? Try our lunar eclipse mix. That's two handfuls of pep pills washed down with a hearty swig, a two-hour energy brew. The blast will send you through the stratosphere and the crash will knock you out gold guaranteed. 
Add an additional 10% to your purchase today and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares, our premier corporate welfare program. At Spacer's Choice, we care about your health and emotional well-being. That's why we put Martin through six years of vendor school only to make him wear this hat. Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. Now, are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is spearmint. I, uh, you know, damn it. No slogan for that one. Uh, look, this hat, my job, it may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but they're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. Uh, speaking of interest, can I interest you in some quality budget goods? At Spacer's Choice, we cut corners so you don't have to. Uh, have a look. BNP Blast Pot. <laughs> Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastards. Yeah, no one wants you on Groundbreaker. These stairs are board property. Disperse now, or I'll detain you for trespassing. Oh, real scary. You're really gonna arrest us Wonder on what's our to station? Your this week. Yeah, this is Chief June Lee's ship. You don't own shit here. Step back. I'm required by board bylaws to use excessive force. The Mardash would space you for trying, you, you waste of O2 scrubbers. Yeah, O2 scrubbers. Here. Look, just get out of here before I tell your captain what you've been getting up to on the clock. Ah, whatever. I got a day to lost hope. I'm just gonna hang in the back and try not to touch anything. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Ah, oh, that's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? No! How dreadful. That was always Alex's greatest fear, you know. Devoured by those fiends. Becoming one with their... their droppings. Right, right. You're going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there. I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go, Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? You haven't read the posters? He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. Well, Alex knew, or he said he did. And you have his ship. Maybe he kept some records around, or a conveniently placed note on his bedside table. What? 
Amazing. I didn't think those things worked. Mostly people draw funny faces on them. An apprehension of this caliber will be tremendous for my career. I'll send you straight away to my superiors in Byzantium, only... Oh, la. Oh, no. Just a teensy one. The teensiest. Nothing to, uh, lie awake worrying about for nights on end or anything. <laughs> the thing is, I needed money. A lot of money. Quickly. For reasons. I might have... Pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market fence here on the Groundbreaker. I can't authorize the paperwork you'll need to turn Phineas in without it. Stray too much from the, uh, straight and narrow, and one may just find himself assigned pastoral duty in a maximum security penitentiary. To give away something so important to you, there must have been some curious reasons. I'll thank you not to question my motives, young miss. It was a mistake. And I'd like to put it behind me. It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important in the hands of someone of such a dubious moral character. I was going to buy it back once I raised the capital. So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. That's really neither here nor there, don't you think? I've... I've been working on something on the side, all right? Something not entirely, uh on the level. It's a little silly, I'll admit. Silly and completely illegal. <laughs> I'd be forced into early retirement if the board found out. I produce bootleg cereals. I just... I can't help myself. Juris and Prudence after hours. Or all my colonists, the new immortals. Romance, tragedy, debt collection. And they're all mine. That was you? Oh my stars. All my colonists is just... Well, it gave me a story hangover for days, Mr. Udom. You're a fan? I've never met one in the flesh. I suddenly feel quite naked. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Udom. I don't judge. The heart wants what it wants, as they say. And mine yearns for the adoration of the masses. Held at a comfortable distance, of course. Flatterer. I might have... Pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market. Stray too much from... Oh, thank... It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important in the hands of someone of such a dubious moral... So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. Though, it might surprise you. Oh, gosh. That's quite a goof, sir. If you don't mind me saying. I'm very well aware. Now... Let's get back to business. That's the long and short of it, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm certain Gladys can be made... Well, can probably be made to see reason. <laughs> I'll be waiting eagerly for your return. Now, is there any way in which I might assist you? Be my guest. A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. Ugh. Law, but it's miserable. My underarms are damp. How can I be expected to work in these conditions? Chief Tennyson is supposedly looking into the cause, but I've seen no action from her. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. Oh, good law! Who'd want to go to that toxic hell pit? No. Emphatically no. Unequivocally no. Immutably no. Best to be clear, I believe. I'm the certified representative of the board's interests here on the Groundbreaker. I'm their eyes, ears, and busy little hands. I have few complaints. Oh, you've noticed my friends. Wonderful. Aren't their guns very large? Tremendously impressive. They're here to keep the peace, of course. Precisely. Groundbreaker makes much ado about its independent status, and so resents any board presence, no matter how benign. When the alternative is board guards at their gates, yes, I do. They don't see it that way, of course, but I can't say I much care. Ask away. Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. That's not unreasonable. I guess it's better than losing your organs, but... I don't know, Captain. It just doesn't seem right. Miss Doyle is deeply in debt, and the board has every right to do whatever they like to recoup that debt. 
What guarantee do I have that she'll agree to the terms you negotiate? I quite concur. It's refreshing to deal with someone practical for a change. I will recall my collection agent. Tell Miss Doyle to report to me promptly for her first assignment. Now, is there anything else you need, or can I return to my work? Hello again! Have you, uh, made any progress with that terribly sensitive thing I told you about? You know, my government seal? Oh, uh, yes. Right, of course. I'm terribly sorry for bothering you, it's just... I really need that seal. You understand. Maybe you should have considered that before selling it. I've castigated myself quite enough already, thank you. I don't need your help. Now, how might I assist you? Is it Mr. Wells, the fellow who woke you? How bad could he be? Have you seen this man? Reward offered for information leading to the capture of noted terrorist Phineas Wells. Report any sightings to your local board embassy. Hearty greeting, potential customer. Welcome to Auntie's Kitchen, a home-style consumable protein dispensary. May this unit dispense proteins for your ingestion. This unit is programmed to simulate shock at such assertions. Shock simulation non-functional. A trouble ticket has been filed. Shock simulation restored. Initiating shock subroutine. How dare you? Shock subroutine complete. Estimated guilt level of customer increased by 35%. Resuming protein dispensation protocol. May this unit dispense proteins for your ingestion. Beginning dispensing sequence. Please unblock all relevant facial protein ingestion tubes. Ingestion materials are served at an excessive temperature. May this unit dispense protein. I picked up some weird chatter on my way in. If you got a complaint, file it at security. Something the matter? You look like someone who's taken their share of cuts and bruises. Need some armor? Maybe it's a bit secondhand, but that's only a testament to its durability. We also have a line of specialized melee weapons. For those times, you have to repel borders, but don't want to risk a bullet through the hull. Everything I sell is fresh from the forge. Technically, the metal formed billions of years ago, but it's freshly in the shape. Not me, but it's in my blood. After the crossing, my family worked Eridanos, indentured to the corporations. I was born in the corporate labor, but I'm the first one of my family to buy my way out. That's why I settled on Groundbreaker. It's the last bastion of freedom. Everything I sell is fresh from the forge. Teddy if you're hungry, you've come to the right place. I've got a fresh ground batch of Spratwurst cooking. They're terrified to lock in the juices. How about a grinder's dozen? You know what Sprats are? Space rats. The laboratories of Spacer's Choice found a use for this limitless frontier resource. Sprat meat is plenty tasty when properly prepared. We grind them up in sausages, then terrify them in their own juices. Legally? No. The terrifying method was developed and marketed by Spacer's Choice. Between you, me, and this grinder, I've been through lean times. If there's one thing you learn on tramp freighters, it's how to make near anything edible. Might be that this old space hand put a few words in the right ears, and could be that Spacer's Choice liked sticking it to C&P by R&Ding our own special meat. Terrifying is a Spacer's Choice brand secret. A mix of 13 herbs and spices, plus a dash of modern chemistry. Absolutely not. Spratwurst, in all related terms, are registered trademarks of Spacer's Choice. Boar, the other meat, is a registered trademark of C&P. Everyone knows our company and theirs are nothing alike. Just as well, near about time for me to go check on the trap. I mean, to unload another crate of farm fresh sprat, grinding sprat worse while we talk. Little things don't make themselves chewy, at least not yet. I'm sure modern science will find a way. Just as well. Fresh from the grinder, any hour. 
serious? I know you were trying to stop. I'll put a couple of bits in Vera's pool. A thousand says Rizzo's Rangers make it to the demi-finals this year. I hate to say it, but the circus time clowns look good this year. The rookie tender is, well, she could break me over her knee, and I'd kind of like it. The clowns, though? <laughs> Sublight salvage. Their front looks sub. Miss Lilia takes good care of us, see? The authorities stay off our trails. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. Sure am. A few years back, they got me started on simple acquisitions. You know those latches they put on cargo bays ain't worth a damn? These days, I stick to HQ and look after Miss Lilia. Welcome back to... So you're the new captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and Executive Director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. Not a word. Pity. My guy in marketing is about to lose his other thumb. It's nice to see the unreliable again. A useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere. I didn't ask. I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings. But there's a catch. Just like in the serials. If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? First, an embargo that's been active ever since the board pulled its forces off-world. Few regulations, plenty of freedom. And second, all the goodies that no one had time to pack. I like that initiative, but ease back on the throttle. Gladys at the Rest and Go might have what you need. If there's anything else, be quick about it. These days, the scrap business all but runs itself. Gives me the time to expand our interests into other sectors, where I can let my hair down. Our field is persuasive acquisitions. At least, that's how my legal advisors tell me to phrase it. Not all of our salvage is abandoned when we find it. Sometimes it takes a polite conversation and a shot across the bow. You know, thank you. I work hard to keep it that way. Very. I have this thing about numbers in spreadsheets, grids in general. I like to think of myself as the last honest businesswoman in Halcyon, but I'll settle for being the most organized one. Hey, careful with the C word around here. I like to keep things above board, and that kind of talk only makes trouble. Sublight occupies a legal blind spot. Ask. I have nothing to hide. Be seeing you. Make sure you aren't followed on your way out. Salvage is a family business. Lily, if you're looking for work. That's a good question. Um... Yes? Yes, that sounds right. I'll make sure to include that in the new employee salvage tutorial. And an old Yakita 37? You think they'd let me peek at the power plant? You have what it takes to defend your corporate township from the Good law, the heat in here is so unbearable, I can hardly even concentrate. Junlei better hurry up with those damn repairs already. Training and I lend your life to protecting our wonderful brands and products. She sure loves this old wreck. 
No something service broke, does not allow guarantee full employment rights, tax don't. breaks, military discount, health benefits, military... Benefits. I thought there'd be more machinery. Must be housed on a sub-level. I may not have looked at half the best stuff. It's all pretty worn, though. Good for you. Hope you scared some sense into those bureaucrats giving you trouble. Just so we understand each other, I'm the final word on the ship. The Mardits, the crew, the engineers, their family. I hope there won't be any problems while you're visiting. Good. Don't go making trouble, and chances are you won't find any. That's how I like it here. So what brings you to Groundbreaker? I'm curious, even though nine times out of ten, the answer is just passing through. Interesting. The powers that be paint an ugly picture of Monarch. Critters and such. Maybe someone in the promenade can get you the right weapon for the job. We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different, so welcome aboard. You're right, I don't. The board is after two things, bits and power, and they only get it by sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. I placate them when I have something to offer, but I can also be a real hard ass. It'd be a joy if I could kick out the corporate merchants and reclaim the docking fees in my lifetime. Too much of Groundbreaker's income is flowing in the wrong direction. I'd like to see that change. I'd like to think of myself as a nice person, but if that gaudy embassy of his was on fire, I might hold my breath a moment before activating the sprinkler system. The board wants control over Groundbreaker, and leeches like Udom Bedford will do anything to please their corporate masters. You've got my attention. You're right, I don't. You've got my attention. Frustrating. Everything down to the circuit boards is past warranty, so I have the pleasure of making life or death decisions on a shoestring budget. Plus, there's no time to train my successor or document fixes in a way that anyone outside the family would understand. You see any bite-sized Tennyson children running around? I didn't think so. The next captain won't have my heritage. I'll have to foster that talent from somewhere. It's only a question of when. Sure is. The Tennysons came over on the Groundbreaker. My grandmother, Chief Gaying, kept it together during the crossing and until she died. I was promoted only recently, when my mom died. Then I took the leap from Chief Engineer to Captain. They must have been amazing people to have taught you all you know, I mean, which is a lot. That means a lot coming from a fellow engineer. It was different knowing that I couldn't turn to anyone who could answer the tough questions for me. Maybe you can see why I'm protective of Groundbreaker. This ship is family. It's got tinkerings and bypasses that only Tennysons know about. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I'm really just a, a dab hand with a wrench. Nothing special. Not like a chief engineer. Don't sell yourself short. It doesn't take a seasoned pro to tinker on Groundbreaker. Just someone who knows how a ship ought to feel. We're always thirsting for help. If you could find your way around this labyrinth of ducks and panels, we could work something out. I hope that was a joke, Captain. I really do. I gilded that thing years ago. Now it brews a stim that goes down stronger than Nan or Spank. Family recipe. You've got my attention. Groundbreaker's radiators need replacement parts. They're dumping superheated air into my ship. My engineers have managed to keep the heat to livable levels, but all the fixes are temporary. This wound is bound to fester. Only the board has access to new parts, and I won't let them swindle me into a corner. They want us to sweat, thinking that'll soften me up for a bad faith deal. If you'll excuse me, they can go fuck themselves. The board isn't helping and my resources are spread thin. If I don't get those radiators back online, Groundbreaker, everyone aboard, will be cooked alive. Reasonable, huh? That's the best news I've heard all day. According to my grandmother's old schematics, the parts we need should be in the back bays. I keep diligent records of station repairs, requisitions, and available assets, just like my grandmother taught me. The station's radiators haven't changed since her time, and her records say the parts should be there. I trust them. Sorry, I forget not everyone knows this ship like I do. The back bays are on a lower deck, long abandoned, and a haven for miscreants now. I have. One of my engineers, plus a small security detail. 
they didn't come back. I can't afford to lose any Mardits on this job. No offense, but a freelancer like you is more dispensable. Mardits are descended from the original Marine Detachment that crossed the Void with Groundbreaker. I don't put their lives on the line if I can avoid it. Those idiots are immune to reason, and they don't much care if the station melts to pieces. They're content to die last. If you could find some way to solve this without violence, I'd prefer that. But more than anything, we need those parts. You must not have been here long. In Halcyon, new parts come by way of interstellar freighters from Earth, and the board monopolizes that kind of trade. That means I'd have to negotiate with the board. I've already given them the shops, the docking fees, and a damn embassy. Damn right. And while I'm captain of the Groundbreaker, it falls to me to preserve this ship's independence. Good. Once you've obtained the parts, we can proceed to the next phase of repairs. The ship's groaning something fierce, but I can make time for you. What? I didn't think you just... Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking. I haven't got much experience working with actual, real spaceships, Miss Junlei. Uh, uh, Chief Junlei. Junlei is fine. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Parvati. You can ask me anything. Right! In person. Sh sure thing, Captain. Wow, great! I I'll do that then. Messages. Later. Oh, your, your name's pretty too. I should have said... Sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Couldn't have done it without your moral support, Captain. Now, if there's nothing else, there are other parts of the ship begging for my attention. For the following story. Cosmo finals are scheduled to air soon, but a scandal has rocked the league. If it's not a life or death problem, I've got more important repairs to do. You should clear out. Engineering's a dangerous place to wander until we get those radiators fixed. Coaches and referees are debating how and if this behavior could lead to a... Any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Back away now, or he'll parley with the king. Look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill. <laughs> yum, yum. Time to feed the flames. It's nothing personal. Promise. Is this what carbon monoxide poisoning looks like? I don't think this deck is too well ventilated. Uh, speaking for myself, Captain, I am not of a mind to be murdered by a psychopath who plays with fire. You came with the crew. Welcome. We got plenty of space to spread out, but only room for one captain. I know this ain't a toy, neighbor from above. It's a catalyst, just like me. Keep talking. That's right, sir. Just the parts. We'll be in and out in a jiff. You won't even know we were here. Tennyson just keeps feeding the furnace, don't she? We're still playing with her last sacrifice out back, with the crew. You don't just ask a king for a favor when you're standing in his court. You bring tribute, sacrifices, prophecy, shit like that. Under its skin, this ship is all poison and darkness. Lead bones, asbestos muscle. Maybe you're right. You've got the run of the kingdom. Up those stairs, you'll find the parts. My crew won't get in your way. Lay it on me, boss. I'm good for it. They rejected it again, didn't they? I thought I could take my fungus garden and go corporate, you know? Damn! Well, maybe I'm better off. Uh, Rizzo's wouldn't know innovation if it bit him on their backsides. You're a natural inventor, Mr. McGred. Don't let him get you down. Kind of you to say, engine gal. You're a lighter in dark times. Ship got impounded. 
The crew and I racked up a debt while we were grounded, and my baby got sold to Sublight. Scrapped for parts. That's bureaucracy for you. Piracy with a smile. Am I your dark reflection? Shit, must be getting old. Stay here too long, and the groundbreaker drains you like a fuel tank. Listen to the fire of those convictions. This one's hungry for justice. Alive or dead? Rare or medium? What's it gonna be? Ha My flame? Shit. Little flick here got me started on the pyro path. Fine. He's yours. Give him a good home. Don't worry, Mr. McRed. We'll treat Mr. Flick extra nice on account of he's your friend. You call your lighter Little Flick? I'll miss my baby Pyro, but it beats losing my head. This court needs its king, and I keen eyes you got there. Sunita gave me this lighter. We had a carnal understanding a few years back, and she wanted me to have something to remember her by. You can come and go in my little kingdom. Just try not to piss off any of the gestures. Old Bess's outflow pipes. We got another complaint. People don't like worms in their shrooms. Ah, uh, they're just killing the oil. Besides, they're my friends. Find a new friend. Worm you all I see is light. Boss says you're all right. Got a meg patch. McCred wants it up and running. I'm trying to think of a good name before I wake it up. Don't give it a name. What are you thinking? You haven't got a heart? Not like us. Today's my birthday. Oh, yeah? Hey, are you one of us yet? Fantastic, we've got them. Now we can move on to cleaner pastures. <laughs> the good stuff. Careful with that shit. Cozy. You've returned, and in one piece. Color me impressed. Good work. I'll take those. I need you to head through the large door at the far end of engineering. Take the elevator down into the machinery shaft. There's a terminal in the back. Activate it when I call over the ship's PA. And bring weapons. There's a slight manticular infestation. If every repair was a one-woman job, I wouldn't need an engineering team. As it is, my staff is busy keeping the station from melting down. You can flip a switch for me, but you can't install these parts. Not quickly, at least. Not on the first try. More than a few. Less than a hive. Nothing you can't handle. We were salvaging parts from a ship. Turned out there were eggs inside. They got into the radiators, and here we are. Well, don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you.
Everybody okay? Tells me the security mechanics are done to kill a bunch of mantis. Bad news. Diagnostics as their circuit boards are fused from the heat, so they're not too picky about who they kill next. Suppose it's time to reevaluate. Temps are lowering across the station. Anyone outside? Whatever it is, I'm working on it. This is Halcyon News. We my boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds. You aiming to send a message? If so, we best do it now while we still got time. Well, yeah. The comm center routes all messages within, to, and from the Groundbreaker. We also switchboard most of the message traffic throughout the Halcyon system. Of course, we're about to go dead, so I may be reappropriated to Architect Knows Where doing Law Knows What. Our primary relay station soon to be occluded by a gas giant. Happens every 40 years or thereabouts. The event's forecasted to last for months, during which we'll lose signal to the station. And that's our problem, how? We've got backup auxiliary relays, but the one currently in orbital range went offline some months ago. We can't spare people for routine maintenance. Sure, I mean, they got their own relays and all, but they'll only send along messages the corporations pay for. And then they charge folks to send messages back, often more than they can afford. And none of that money goes to the Groundbreaker. Just tightens the board's grip on our throat. Not nearly as much, and that money goes to keeping the station operational, helps keep us independent. If we lose the message fees, the entire ship will feel the pinch. Before long, the only place for people to trade words and goods will be on Terra 2, right under the board's control. That'd spell the end of Groundbreaker. Well, we wouldn't be utterly and completely blacked out, but we'd lose the majority of our comm traffic for sure. Ships and colonies on Terra 2 need a clear line from their communications towers to the Groundbreaker for the transmissions to make it through. If it's not clear, they transmit to the closest relay station, which stores the message, then passes it along when our orbits align. That they can, and they do. But only between ships owned by the same corporation. No corp will authorize sending messages through a ship owned by a rival. And no corp will relay messages for the Wildcat freighters, not without charging them more than they'll make in a single haul anyway. That's why we're the message hub. The Groundbreakers neither corporate owned nor board controlled. Our comms are neutral. The others won't be in orbital range during the occlusion event. Isn't it some law of the universe? The relay I gotta rely on is, of course, the one on the Fritz. 
Yeah, I'm working on it. I finally got the chief to approve the budget for a diagnostic expedition. But allocating the personnel loss for sending a technical team to the relay station keeps getting denied by Junlei. Um, the chief. We don't know why it went down or if it's even a hardware-related issue. Getting a team out there takes time and money, neither of which we have readily on hand. And we do have multiple auxiliaries, just... They won't be in orbital range during the next few months. Our backup station will be. If it weren't for the occlusion event coming our way, we'd be doing fine as always. You save my comm center from chaos. I guarantee I'll get the chief to authorize some payment forms with your name on them while you're out fixing the station. I should say no, but why not? Maybe you can figure out why it's offline. I'll send you with an equipment manual. Hopefully we'll get lucky or I'll get my approval in time. Hope you don't mind if I borrow that manual when you're done with it, Captain. I could do with some leisure reading. Oh, and I'll need you to retrieve a copy of the Relay's backup data. I gotta forward any messages from Earth stored in the memory. The Relay stations orbit the edge of the Halcyon system, so they tend to receive the majority of any transmissions from Earth. I'm sure the station's got a stack of junk messages just waiting for me to sort through. It's not like they're in high demand. Most tend to be adverts on new products, meaning only folks in Byzantium can afford them. Not getting into too much danger, are you? Could always liven your day with a double mustard terrified Spratwurst. Itching to whack someone over the head? We can help with that. Seen here. Condiments sold separately. Some assembly of complex witch style meals may be required. Is it just me or is Groundbreaker feeling extra chilly? Maybe you ought to help yourself to a piping hot frozen dinner. Shit. Oh, shit. Uh, no, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, excellent. Yeah, that was intentional. As the face of Spacer's Choice, it's my honor to be a public figure. Who needs privacy when you have job security? Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least... Uh, hello. Junlei called up from engineering, said I should let you buy medical supplies from our stores. Now, is there something I can help you with? A better selection than you'll find on the promenade deck, and a quality commensurate with a friend of the station. Got word from Udom, from the hitman who trailed me the other night. Seems I'm indentured to the board now. I ain't too elated about going exclusive, but it's better than winding up dead. You sure saved my skin, stranger. All debts between me and Ellie are cleared. The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment. But I'm a decent scrapper and a better than average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. It's like people touching a cookie and leaving it in the box. It's just one of those things that gets under my skin. If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. She helped me win a bet. No such thing as a low stakes bet in my book. We were on a smuggling run planet side when our point man bet me I couldn't outrun a mantisaur. That's what I thought. And as you can probably guess, the thing was faster than it looked. Probably would have caught me if Jesse hadn't picked it off. What, you don't appreciate my go getter attitude? Moral is, mantisaurs can't run when they're full of holes. In a bet. We were on a smuggling run planet side when our point man bet me I couldn't outrun a mantisaur. What can I say? Something about people telling me I can't do a thing that just makes me itch to prove them wrong. And, as you can probably guess, the thing was faster than- Moral is, mantisaurs can't run when they're full of holes. Smuggling run planet- And, as you can probably guess, the thing was- Yeah, but the important thing is I won the bet. You won't be sorry. Though it looks like you've got a full roster already. <laughs> Welcome to the crew, Miss Ellie. We're real happy to have you. Something on your mind? 
I'm a surgeon by training and a pirate by inclination. Not much else to know, Captain. I like long walks on the promenade and the smell of Spacer's Corona. I make a mean zero-G cocktail and I've got a meaner right hook. It's a mix of whatever you've got on hand. Usually zero-G brew with some Spectrum vodka if you're lucky, Purpleberry shake if you're not. Out on the edge of the Aether, we learn to make do with what we've got. No room for fancy predilections. I'll make you one sometime. If you don't enjoy it, I'll make a few more until you do. We learn to Sure do. Some of it was even legal. What gave it away? It's the hair, right? Or maybe the ammo belt? I had it custom made. Gotta advertise your business somehow. I've done all types of work with all kinds of crews. If there's one thing you ought to know about me, it's that I won't tell you your business. Your ship, your way. Glad to hear it. It's worked for me this long. There's a lot of business that goes through the Groundbreaker. Some of it's board-authorized freight hauling, and some of it's not. I've done all types of work with all kinds of crews. If there's one thing you ought to know about me, it's that I won't tell you your business. Your ship, your way. Makes two of us, Captain. Well, my blood type is AB positive, I'm a Leo, and I despise Space Hospital. Never mind what anyone else tries to tell you. That about covers it. Aw, oh, come on. That stuff's boring. Shall we get back to mischief or what? No complaints here. Breaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. Well, I didn't expect her to be so tall. And did you see the size of her arms? What? No. Maybe? I don't... It's like somebody reached into my head and pulled out what I didn't know I wanted. You know how hard it is to find anybody who likes working with tools in a little town like Edgewater? I just met her. How could I be? All I know is, I want to talk with her more. Did you see how everybody on Groundbreaker listens to June Lei? She's just, here's how to fix it. And they trust her. It's just... She's calm and knows what to do. I wish I was half so confident. It get cooler in here? I swear they had the heat turned way the hell up. Ellie, my mind, but it's been a while. How's that whisper muzzle working out for you? I sold it. Didn't seem to make me any quieter. Hmm, that mod was for your gun, not your smart mouth. You want to bust my chops? Do it over drinks next time I'm on station. Please don't mind her. Everything I sell works as advertised. Some people just like to sass me, because I don't bite back. Talcyon News. We hey, Ellie. Having your usuals? Not today. I'm on the job. Never thought I'd see the day. What'll it be? Glad what Didn't quite catch that. Uh, you'll have to speak up. Glass ear? Sorry, there, there's a lot of static on my end. Nothing to fear. I, sorry again. The sound of Groundbreaker's engines has really got to me over the years. Huh? What? Huh. Now that I heard. Gracious. I was just sitting down for tea. Depends. What are you planning to do with it? See the lights. Taking a show or two at the infamous Bijou. Could be a treat if you like that kind of thing. All right, I'll sell it to you. But it's gonna cost you dear. Anything else, dear? Yes, dear. Which offer were you interested in? Fantastic. Do be careful with it, dear, as these keys tend to be a tad hard to acquire. You should have a chat with Lilia Hagen in the sublight offices. She's a tear. You'll love her. Now, was there anything else? Well, ain't that peachy? You enjoy that stamp, you understand? And don't you dare use it responsibly. Anything else? Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Set foot on a whole other planet? I know Monarch's a moon. I think it counts anyhow. Still getting a queen? 
Glad to see you ain't moved on from Groundbreaker yet. Hey, Tobias. How's the leg? Good as you left it, ma'am. Still bends and everything. A bullet went through it, most of the way. The other guy thought his ship was perfectly operational. I told him it was salvage. We disagreed. I won. Workplace hazards, Captain. Pretty routine around here. Make this conversation worth my time, Captain. Sure is. Welcome aboard, Contractor. One of my guys in Stellar Bay has a lead on some high-grade salvage, but he went dark before he could spill the goods. We arranged a drop at the Saltuna Warehouse's loading dock. Find whatever he left there and take it to Fallbrook. My gal Catherine will be expecting you. When the board pulled out of Monarch, they buried or sealed anything they couldn't carry off-world. Apparently, one of Catherine's teams uncovered an abandoned lab with full tanks of Alta Vitae gas. It's exactly one million bits per cubic meter. Before you get too excited, the only thing rarer than Alta Vitae gas is a reliable buyer. Dangerous stuff. Acid for the nucleon in your cells. It's no good to anyone outside of a lab. But it can be a lot of fun, if you don't mind the possibility of rewiring your body on an atomic level. You and I have different notions of fun, Dr. Fenhill. A few of my contractors run flights in there and out again, working around the board embargo. We keep the community lubricated with a steady supply of booze and unconventional erotica. Catherine is tied up with other matters, and I don't want her bothered. I told her I'd be sending my best fixer. Try and play the pocated with a steady supply of booze and unconventional erotica. Byzantium kids with more money than sense can thank Sublight for their good time. Now get going. Catherine will brief you on the details when you check in with her at Fallbrook. One last thing. When you're on the job, keep a pair of eyes on the back of your head. Understood? Don't go looking for anything, except salvage. Just watch out. You'll do fine. Probably nothing to worry about. Probably. I ain't worried if you aren't, Captain. Uh, honest. Hey, Captain. My guy in Stellar Bay had a Mask awake. I got no clue what half the junk on this desk is for, except the lamp. Improvised weapon. Swell. Has anyone from HR given you the new employee talk? Here goes. Welcome to Sublight, where salvage runs thicker than blood. We're still trying out new slogans. Sublight, because what's your alternative? Hey, that's not a bad slogan. Thanks. Glad to have you on board. We could use the help after what happened to the last contractor. Uh, no I didn't. Oh, that. Uh, just stay in Miss Lilia's good side. Stealing office supplies is a good way to end up as salvage, if you know what I mean. You're gonna have a short career with that attitude. Just do whatever Miss Lilia says and you'll be fine. It's always got plenty of work. Good gig if you don't mind where the bits come from. This is house. Do you have it? You know, my government seal? Oh my law, you've done it, you've saved my hide! I can't thank you enough. Now then, uh, let me see. I just have to apply the seal here, sign like so, and... Ta-da! <laughs> here are the forms you'll need once you reach Byzantium. Oh, and a nav key so your ship can travel there. Those authorization forms will let you speak with Sophia when you arrive. I'll send her a message straight away to let her know you're coming. So Where have you been living, Captain? Under a rock? Miss Sophia's got to be the second most important person in the entire colony. Yes, quite. Miss Akanda is just the person to take someone with your particular talents and sterling character under her wing. She can fill you in on all of the board's operations in the colony, really put your talents to use. Best of luck to you and thank you again. Give my regards to the unreliable. How do you do? Huh. Funny, you're gonna love Byzantium. Byzantium? I guess that'll be pretty crowded.
How goes the hunt? I've been ruminating on it. Nothing excessive, mind you, but the scoundrel deserves a light beaten at least before he kicks off. Here's the bounty payout. Nice work down there. With any luck, we can hire more sharp-eyed bounty hunters like you in the future. With that bastard McRed dead, there ain't much else in the offing. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Salt cruisers ever put into Groundbreaker? Hey, you got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine looking ship. Only. What? No. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, maybe a little. I'm not trying to be all creepy like. I just want to make a good case for myself. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. You're serious, you're giving me a shot. All right, uh, hang on, hang on. I put together a little speech, just in case you asked. Hey there, I'm Felix Millstone. I have prepared a list of reasons why I believe you should hire me to join the crew of your ship and or outlaw gang. Firstly, I am highly personable, and I get along well with anyone who is not of the jackass persuasion. <laughs> Sorry, he's funny. Uh, secondly, I can be counted on in the event of a firefight, standoff, and or raid. My motto is, if you need a steady gun hand, I'm your man. That motto is a, it's a work in progress. Additionally, I have several years of experience as a box hauler. This skill may come in handy if you need a body dragged away or a door held open while escaping enemy fire. In conclusion, thank you for considering me for your ship crew and or outlaw gang. I look forward to our adventures together. I thought that was real good, Felix. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What do you think? Sure, an interview. That sounds fair. I mean, first time for everything, right? Uh, it's delicious. Mock apple pie and a triple kale crust, maybe with a little cream on top? Classic. Are you kidding? I love a good fight. One time, I took an autoloader's head clean off its servos with one swing of a tossball stick. You can count on me in a scrap, boss. That's a promise. The foreman told me my biggest problem was that I didn't take orders. I told him my problem is not with authority, it's with jackasses. So yeah, I guess my biggest flaw is that I don't suffer idiots. Hope that's not a deal breaker. Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not gonna regret this. Well, this'll be interesting, huh? Somehow, I always find my way back to the Groundbreaker. Didn't I tell you? I'm secretly the chairman's orphan child, abandoned at birth in the back bays. That's right. Can't get anything past you, boss. Honestly, before you pick me up, I was living in the back bays. I spent my whole life up there, watching ships roll in and take off. I always wondered when my ship would come. I was what folks on the Groundbreaker call a stowaway. Means I was invisible. Life carried on for everybody else, but not for me. I had to make my own way. Stowaways ain't free. We were just as trapped as anybody else. We didn't belong in the system, but we still had to live in it. We still had to play by the board's rules. Imagine spending your whole life looking out at the stars and knowing you could never aspire to be anything more than a box hauler. That's what it's like. Hauling boxes was about the only work I could find. Hated every second of it. The foreman and I never got on. Yeah, I hear you, boss. It sounds like I was out of line, right? Swinging on my own foreman like that. But on the other hand, broadsiding the jackass with a tossball stick, that felt good. That felt real good. You were tr Oh, I can do civilized. Proper civilized too. Genuflecting and everything. I caught a real lucky break. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be back at the docks, waiting for the day my ship arrives. Yeah, I guess my ship did arrive in the end. I've got you to thank for that. 
Thanks for listening, boss. Let's get going. Captain, your return time is within 14% of the expected value. Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Ah, uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on. The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas V. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. There is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapon system? A sensible choice, as we do not have any laser weapons. Of course, what part of the colony? We are cleared to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, Please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. The Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. You are more than welcome, Captain. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to wear in Terra 2? Byzantium is reputed to be the cream of the crop of Halcyon's residents. We're sure to stick out like a sore thumb. I am sorry to report, Captain. The Minister of Earth has fallen ill, again, and will have to postpone his goodwill tour of the colony. Yes. Byzantium is the crown jewel of Halcyon, all the colony's opulence, elegance, and decadence is concentrated in this single city. To say its inhabitants are immensely and disproportionately well-to-do would be an understatement. Colloquially referred to as gold bloods, most of Byzantium's dwellers will never step outside the city's walls. Conversely, for many Halcyon colonists, the city is a faraway dream. Report, Captain. Yes. Noted, Captain. I shall endeavor to be more, as the humans say, chatty in the future. According to Colony News, he's suffering from a The minister is expected to make a full recovery and resume working closely with the chairman of the board soon. However, I find it of note that in the past 52 cycles, the minister has been reported ill 27 times, suffering from 10 different ailments. Of course, what part of the colony happily comply with your order? Just as soon as we have a laser weapon system, Terra 2. Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, or it was when first built. 
Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It Since you diverted power to Edgewater, the botanical lab shut down, and the deserters were forced to return to town. Meanwhile, the cannery's output increased, enabling the town's population to prosper. Thank you for nothing, Captain. I cannot say. First, I need to adjust my memory interpretation sensors. But I think my answer is... Yes. You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? I'm sure they are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. Honey, would you wear in Monarch? Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite detention or death. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Monarch? Ah, Monarch. The armpit of the Halcyon system. Her last functioning port town is Stellar Bay. Well, that is if you don't count Sublight's smuggler's port at Fallbrook. It's Sublight run for the purpose of shipping contraband. And before you ask, I don't know the coordinates, so I can't dock us there. I believe it has something to do with the planet being an uninhabitable wilderness and a lawless land with no corporate presence? You may wish to survey the residents in Stellar Bay for additional data points. How can I be of assistance? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber, perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on the Lost Hope? When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. Fortunately for you, I am similarly programmed to protect the ship's captain and crew. A misfired attempt at humor. Captain Hawthorne suggested I should practice my ability to joke more often. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? A star walks into a black hole, but doesn't seem phased. The black hole then turns to the star and says, I don't think you understand the gravity of this situation. Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board certified jingle their favorite song. As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. Yes, Captain. Beginning playback now. There's... There's viscera and death everywhere. Gunfire, gnashing teeth, the unemployed. For law's sake, if anyone's receiving this, please send help. What? Uh, no, 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 no. Captain, we are now capable of accessing the Roseway landing pad. Also, corporate protocol requires that all distress signals include a list of key personnel for retrieval. The embedded names are Anton Crane, Vaughn Cortez, and Orson Shaw. The unit is a cleaning SAM. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify SAM. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Roseway, Captain. This Roseway business smells. 
Something tells me things didn't end well for the guy who made the distress call, and whoever or whatever got him will be waiting for us. Just a little caution, could be a reason no one's picked up this job yet. They don't give medical degrees to dummies, Captain. Anyway, we might as well take a look out there, see if we can get the jump on whoever's waiting for us. Something on your mind? <laughs> you serious? I thought we were getting along just fine. But home, Captain. <laughs> Hey, Captain. Can I get your temperature on something real quick? What? No. If it were, I'd be hollering loud enough to wake the dead. So, June Lei and I have been talking some. Through messages? I got him here on my data pad, and well... She sent me a poem. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it. Because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good. But real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. And the trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. Made my chest hurt, kinda. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't, I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the Vale, they didn't... They said I was cold. When folks start implying you're a little different from an auto-mechanical, you start to wonder. I guess I just needed to talk. I'm feeling a touch better. Thanks for hearing me out, Captain. I actually had another message from Junlei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm gonna change that. Right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends, got to thinking... Isabel. They were close, Captain. Like, more than friends close. I don't know. June Lei talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? Lost Hope? Thanks, Captain. I'll be ready. Some adventure cereal with them? It's not my thing, but he's real sweet about it. No Something chewed clear through that armor. Clear, 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 clear the roadway. Up, 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 short, up, short, up, short, up, short, is punishable by a fine of no, no, no less than ten, ten, ten thousand bits. I done had enough of this shit. I'm just the fucking tarmac guard. No one said nothing about fighting no raps. You're powerful free with that tongue of yours. You got me. Just testing your metal. 
Not much fight left in me anyways. Distress call? From here? Shit. They told me that weren't allowed. Got me. I just do what I'm told, and I was told not to do such. Scientist, name of Anton Crane. Someone said he's panicking inside the comm center. Alarms went off, raps broke loose, and I hightailed it in here to get a wall between me and them beasts. Um, forget I said anything about that. Wish they tasted like Sisty Pig. <laughs> Them's good eating. Some say chicken. I say the north end of a southbound woolly cow. Anything else you'd like to know? Oh, before I forget, Anti Cleo's makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. Better than nature. Not like that crap Spacer's Choice pedals. If you've come to end my life, let's be on with it. Oh, not actually one of them, are you? No, you... You're the one saved the board quite a headache over an Emerald Veil. Uh, yes, yes. Anton Crane, lead scientist here. I must apologize if my call diverted you. I, uh, may have panicked. Everything's under control now, though, truth be told. Why, one of our attackers, of course. Obviously, they were drawn here in an attempt to make off with my research. More often than not, seems I'm the only one who sees the opportunity here. A ticket to the good life once my research plays out. Byzantium. Recognition, money, proper facilities. No more uninspired dolts like my associates here. And might you be the sort of person who's, uh, not averse to risking your life, if the pay were right? Hours ago, a group of vicious malcontents fell upon us, shot up our labs and loosed our research subjects, the Raptodons. If those Cretans get their hands on my research, well, they'll need not kill me. You have a point there. It most decidedly cannot make the situation any worse. All right, we were tasked with formulating a new and improved dental gel. One cannot exaggerate the benefits of good dental hygiene. May I continue? While doing research on enzymes specific to the Raptodon's digestive system, we developed an additive which we subsequently discovered to be the most effective appetite suppressant ever. Not just any diet toothpaste. The ultimate diet toothpaste. Oh, I'm certain it could be made into that as well, with only a few changes to its molecular composition. But you're missing the point. Let's focus for a moment, shall we? Even if you disregard the obvious value of Auntie Cleo's Apazap diet toothpaste in and of itself, we're talking about my career here as well. Nice, is it not? Came up with that myself. It's a shame our marketing department is almost as befuddled as my co-workers here. Yes, but don't kill their mother if it's avoidable. We've need of her to replenish our stocks. I think there's gas in the lab somewhere that can be used to put them out. The research is in the safe in my office. You'll have need of my code and keycard. The lab's entrance is in the side of a hill. You can't miss it if you just follow the road. You'll pass by the town's original... by the Grand Architect. Jameson, he's in the old lab. My protege. I sent him to retrieve some metabolic precursors, and I forgot him. You don't understand. He was my responsibility. All of the people stationed here were, are, regardless of their thinking on the matter. If he has died, too many have been lost. Too many black marks against my name. And far too much paperwork. I'll thank you not to mistake my ambition for callousness. It's just that their constant complaining can begin to wear. They refuse to see the opportunity afforded us here. It's infuriating. And my colleague, Jameson, will you find him for me? Turn. What news? Please tell me you've recovered my research. Without my work to focus on, I find myself tending towards darker paths of inquiry. I will be happy to answer your questions once I have my research. In the meantime, I will occupy myself considering the different ways I can end my life. How droll. 
I'll take your suggestion under consideration. This guy's already wrapped fodder. You're underestimating the importance of the eighth back. I got 500 bits on the Darlings team. You picked a hell of a day to visit. I'm Vaughn. Vaughn Cortez. Uh, Dr. Vaughn Cortez. But just Vaughn's fine, really. Over in the main labs. I rabbited back here when I realized I was hearing gunshots, not blown fuses. We've been cooped up in here, I don't know, hours? Too long. I have to get back to, to work. What? <laughs> uh, I mean, we're surrounded by hungry raptodons. Who wouldn't be? Am I right? Look. I don't want to go back out there, but there's a thing I gotta do. I had to leave an experiment running at the lab. Something I've been working on a long while. Something that could really get me ahead. Know what I mean? No, no, not unless you break the... But why would you? Let me explain. I've been extracting organic compounds from raptodons. Compounds that have... Uh, benefits. Whoa, slow down. Benefits? In certain social situations personal situations where you might want to um, enhance your charisma oh for he's making an raptured captain an aphrodisiac wrapped musk is the main ingredient what no I mean yes I'm getting the musk with monarch embargo the price is sky high but I'm not making the drug the results are outside the margin of error technically sure of course our lab's south of here, down the road. Not the old public lab, the one past that, built into the mountainside. The newer lab is built for, um, more sensitive work. We mostly use the old lab for storage these days. <laughs> uh, no. But there are outlaws shooting it up. I'm guessing it hasn't been secret for a while. Uh, don't mention this to Anton, okay? He's kind of a tight ass about the lab. Like, squeeze coal into diamond tight. My equipment's in the lower levels, way in the back. I have a big room all to myself. Dissection tables and whatnot. It should have been running this whole time. Just grab the results and bring them here. If you have a buyer. I got a contact who wants to haul the entire batch to Byzantium. Help me out, I'll cut you in for a share. I'll even pay you before I am. When Great! <sighs> this is really gonna save my ass. Any news? On the thing we spoke about? Lay it on me. It was like that when we got here. I heard it had been shut down for years. But the toilet's flush and the roof doesn't leak. Much. Ask Dr. Crane. All I know is my bit, analyzing the raptodon equivalent of hormones. Yeah? Anyone in particular? Mostly they're leptin analogs. Raptodons have four different varieties. Concentrations vary based on the season. Could be, Captain. I can't see how there's a market for them, though. Maybe it's for them fat cats up in Byzantium. As little as possible. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm staff. Endocrinologist. We've been studying a load of raptodons hauled in from Monarch. Hey, whatever. I've had days like that. Want to talk about peptides? Hoping to score some free samples? Was that supposed to be the living quarters? Seemed about as livable as a coffin. The ventilation shaft runs from the bottom of the lab to the top of the hill, over the garage. Top of the hill's rafted on territory. Sit down. I don't need to do it myself. I can stay here if you want. What else? Ah, outlaws, I assume. Do me a favor and let me finish this, will you? And then make it quick, please. Aren't you with the brutes that attacked our lab? Aren't you here to pillage our supplies and leave our corpses to the raptodons? Oh, well, good luck. Now, we got the carpet in here. Oh, you're still here. If you haven't already, you might speak to Anton. He can point you in the right direction. Now, we got the carpet in here. What does it look like? 
I'm preparing a personal defense device. Or trying to, anyway. I... Why, yes. I suppose I could. Thanks. Certainly not. But Porter and his goons are busy with the outlaws, and Anton's busy holding his head in his hands. Seems as good a time as any to get a bit of work done. No. Uh, well, yes. Well, no. Uh, perhaps. I left schematics in our storage facility. As far as I know, the security commander hasn't found them yet. I admit I'd feel better were they returned to me. Out the south gate. Follow the road. It'll be on the left, past the old lab. I found an advanced pistol when we moved here, but it's broken. I need those schematics to modify it to output superheated air. It should quite easily burn through raptodon hides. Say, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a tube of thermal paste on you, would you? Blast! Well, good luck. I hope I see you back here in one piece. Oh, hello. Uh, why do you seem familiar? Have we met? I'm just quite selective about what information I choose to retain. That said, yes, I recognize you. Hello. Ah! Oh! I am Orson Shaw, Chief Behavior- Wait. Yes, I'm quite sure we've met. If they didn't want to tempt us, why'd they lock it up? Who are you for? Yeah, I ain't gonna make no comment on anything like that. For I've... I told you, you're a good Hey boss, could we get some Rizzos? I don't think you're supposed to be wandering around. Security's gonna tell you to make tracks. Wanna treat yourself before you go? Something for the road, maybe? I don't really know you. Roseway's supposed to be closed off to visitors. Stands to reason you could be a corporate spy of some sort. Then again, there's nothing in my contract that says I can't sell the corporate spies. Your bits are the same as anybody else's. Sure, not like I get many customers. Technically, I'm not in business at all. Roseway closed down years ago. Corporate still sends us the occasional shipment of necessities through unofficial back channels. Of course, if something goes wrong, like one of our guards drinking himself to an early grave or raptodons running wild, corporate won't acknowledge we ever existed. I'm so glad you asked. Some people say the name refers to the 17 rungs in Auntie Cleo's official ladder of corporate advancement. These people are wrong. Truth is, we've been established, closed down, renamed, reestablished, and then reopened a grand total of 17 times in the last 40 years. Corporate's still deliberating over a new name. The matter remains hotly contested in committee, but we're expecting a decision within the next five to seven years. Exciting times. Can't say I do. Any Cleo products satisfy all of our nutritional needs. At least they used to. My folks filled their whole pantry with all sorts of Annie Cleo products. These days, we don't get much in the way of variety. Maybe some tripicale pasta or some ketchup if we're lucky. I hear it's like that all over the colony. We eat what we can get, and we don't get much. Sure, you need something to clean raptin on blood out your clothes? Bearman's locked away in there? Make it. Someone knows how to make an entrance. 
It ain't stealing if no one sees. Did someone lift the lock? What? How the hell did you get in here? No, not. I don't care about the beasts. I care about the front door. This is an egregious breach of protocol. How'd you get in? Ugh. Can't use the centrifuge without supervision. Can't file reports without him double-checking their every word. Can't save myself from mortal peril. It's like he thinks I'm a child. His hands-on management style is coming to a point of contention, I tell you. Please. That man doesn't have an altruistic bone in his body. I just happen to have the metabolic precursors from our last test. I'd wager my last bit that if you brought back the precursors and left me for dead, Anton wouldn't bat an eye. Oh, wonderful! That's much better. I'm getting out of here so I can personally thank him for his compassion. Ooh, what you find? Let's take it down. Chair is making my nose itch. Their labs. Miserable way to live. This is how you hide something valuable. You keep your hands where I can see them. I wasn't sure I was seeing right, but there you are. We ain't met, but I know you all is the same. A body does enough black work for the board, word gets round. I know your work, and I ain't obliged to be patient. You split that hair any finer, we're all gonna be glowing in the dark. The boss left me out here to keep watch for Cleo reinforcements. You keep clear of our business, I got no quarrel with you. From what I hear tell, you tow the company line too damn often. Ain't a good look for any freelancer. Look, let's start over. Between lizards and assholes, my patience is thin as freighter hull. Name's Lillian. I've had better. Lost some things in a dust-up. But I didn't get eaten like some of our crew got that going for me. 
some of them are okay. You don't get too close in this work. And Dylan, well, ain't no one gonna regret his passing. Least of all his mama. I was near the Raptodon pen when they got loose. Had to set a few to rights. When I got to checking if all my parts were still attached, I realized I'd dropped my cigarette case. When I turned about, I seen two fine gun hens being snacked on by lizards. No cigarette case is worth my life, no matter how badly I need a smoke. This was a Spacer's Choice commemorative case. Some promo for founding day they did back in, uh, I forget the year. Worth decent bits to collectors. If she can't hang on to it, maybe be better off in someone else's hands. An outdoor raptodon pen yonder, past the main entrance. Well, only knows why they're breeding the damn things. Good law, no. Just needed to vent, and you're the only one hereabouts. Though if you do happen to get a hold of it, I'll be setting here a spell. I need to give some kind of disclaimer, like everything I say is my own opinion. Corporate types love that shit. Definitely got something large and uncomfortably shaped up her nethers. Yammering on about rights and privileges and what all. I'm like, lady, just sing out when you want something shot. Leastways, her pamphlets make good kindling. Don't mind the asking, but I ain't telling. You want details? Go talk at Miss High and Mighty What's-Her-Name. She's in the labs, pinned down. Yeah, Cassandra O'Malley. We mostly call her Cass, because Cassandra just sounds fancy. Hoping? Sure. Expecting? Not so much. Well, you'd sure as hell have earned it, wouldn't you? I'd be obliged. Just don't lose any parts trying. Yeah? What about it? Who the... you? Yeah, you. Get over here. You care to explain what you're doing here? Did you miss the big sign outside? That I am. Name's Porter. If Doc Crane did send you... I'd be glad for the help. Bad news is, we haven't been able to clean these outlaws out of the lab. Good news is, they haven't been able to escape, neither. That's how they got in. We got that locked down. There's no access from their level without a security key card. That also means no fresh air down there. Probably reeks of Raptodon musk. Couldn't happen to a nicer bunch. They don't care which side their lunch is on. But the wrapped cells are down with the outlaws, so they're the appetizers. When it looks like they're fixing to make a sally upwards, I have a sniper pop the lock on a wrapped cell. It's kept them busy. Thanks. Company will probably bill me, but better lose a wrap than get shot, I says. They're down there. For now. I reckon they got no backup. On the other hand, we don't neither. And our mechanicals all went haywire for some damn reason. Damn mechanicals have always been more trouble than they're worth. Who, me? Or you mean the lab in general? Soap or something? I don't know. Years back, they made antibiotics. You could maybe ask Doc Crane what he does all day. If it was illegal, the company wouldn't ask us to do it. Easy to avoid breaking the law when you decide what's legal. Pretty damn sure. The shafts are sealed with four centimeter hatches. They're not getting back out that way without a security key card. They'd need to take mine. Or make a new one in my office, I guess. Why you want to know that? What for? Fair point. Here's a key card to my office. Head left from here and downstairs. It's across from the cafeteria. I got a machine that makes pass cards for us. Just don't knock over any paperwork in there. I got a system. So... Sit, sweepy. Here they come!
근데 Grab a few souvenirs. Hey, you over here. As I live and breathe, the board's very own pet mercenary. It's been a bit of a day, so I'll get to the point. Yes, I have Crane's research. No, I'm not giving it back. Sorry to disappoint you. I suppose it does not matter. Either Crane sent you, or you are some scavenger come to rob me in my moment of weakness. Let's make a deal. I'd like to go on living. You'd probably like to make some money. Help me get out of here, and I will pay you for your trouble. Same reason you are, more than likely. I imagine we picked up the same tip. Secret research facility, abandoned town, minimal security. Oh, please. I'm not shaking down valuables from hapless travelers. I'm stealing corporate secrets. This is an underground lab, off the radar. That means their research is secret, and secrets are always valuable. Granted, diet toothpaste is not exactly what comes to mind when I imagine secret research in underground labs. Diet toothpaste. Can you imagine a more pernicious example of corporate materialism? I do not know what is worse. Working here, or dying here. What matters is that I have been lied to. I was led to believe this was a high-priority corporate facility hiding valuable research. This job was not supposed to end with me stuck in some wretched lab smelling like wraps. So I would be very much obliged if you gave me a break. You mean other than the satisfaction of doing me a good turn? Trust me. Um, I am good for my word. You will be equitably rewarded on my honor. But I will not haggle or bargain with you until you help me. The first thing I need is a key card to unlock my door. Then I'd need you to clear me a path out of here. There are two ways out. The quickest is through the front door, but Clio Security's bottled up in there. If you don't want to shoot them, I suppose you could talk to them. The other way out is through the loading bay, but you'd have to clear out the wraps for me. Then I could just slip out the back, sight unseen. Because Crane is a tool. Because no good deed goes unrewarded. Because doing me a good turn is the honorable and decent thing. We are all of us trapped. You, me, the scientists. This is not a colony. It is a slave camp. Yes, we raided the lab, shot some guards, killed a few scientists in the crossfire, but it was all for a higher cause. All wars have casualties. I regret taking a life, but we were doing them a mercy. Better to die than live in a state of slavery. I prefer freedom fighter, but I will not quibble over semantics. Come on now. Do you want to be dull and boring and servile like everyone else? Or do you want to break some rules? You might be the first stroke of luck I've had all day. Thank you. I'm in your debt. Ask away. I have got nothing but time. From the day we are born, we are made to obey. Never question, never hope, never dream of anything greater than the lot appointed to us. Corporations expect us to work until the day we die. But they could not give a half-bit shit about our lives. No one asks why anymore. The establishment tells us to live here, work there, eat that, drink this. All our choices are made for us, so we forget we ever had a choice. I am doing this because I can. Because it thrills me. Because I take a deep and profound pleasure from stabbing at the heart of corporate power, no matter how shallow the wound. 
I have been asking myself the same question. Our tactics were sound, but no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. We were acting on a good tip, but the tip never mentioned the Rapts. When we hit the lab, those Rapts got loose, tore through as many of ours as theirs. Sell it, of course. I don't have any use for the scribblings of idiotic scientists, but whoever gave me this tip obviously does. Assuming I make it out of this place alive. And with my ship out of commission, I'll have to leave on foot and hope my luck changes. One problem at a time, I suppose. Nothing beyond the purview of a talented freelancer like you. You really expect me to just let them pass? Why? So they can regroup behind their walls and mount another assault? Never mind. I'm obviously in no position to argue with you. If you can talk those guards into... I'll help however I can. A Raptodon is an apex predator, native to the jungles of Monarch. They are entirely unsuited to life on Terra too, which may account for their horrible temper and appetite. What? Do not give me that look. I am allowed to have hobbies. Biology happens to be one of them. Yes, we accidentally released the Rapts into the world when we attacked this place. But I am not at fault here. Those scientists had no business experimenting on these creatures. Oh, for goodness sake. They are just animals. Aggressive, territorial, frightened, and very probably hungry animals, but they die to gunfire like anything else. I do remember one of those feckless scientists yammering something about a Raptodon suppression system. How should I know? I left his body where I shot him. Take your time. I am, to my chagrin, not going anywhere. Reminds me of medical school. But even a raptodon deserves better. I've never been so pleased at the sight of an open door. Please tell me you've cleared a way out of here. You got nimble fingers, Captain. saw everything you must think me a fool i was watching on the security cameras you got downright friendly with the outlaw leader i'm trying real hard to figure what your angle is with your rep i figured you'd be helping us you got one minute starting now you convinced her to let us leave in peace 
Listing the ills we've been done ain't exactly putting me in a mind to compromise. I gotta believe that all we've done will mean something to the company, to Doc Crane. That effort will make up for mistakes. I've worked for Auntie Cleo 18 years, done my best for them. Always expected they'd do right by us in turn. I reckon I don't see any better solution. Fine, damn it. We'll pull out. Here, my key card. It'll get you access to the whole place. Full stakes, people. We're heading back to town. Doc Crane better get over himself. On your mind, but the answer is obviously me. So you have. I am much obliged. And now, if you do not mind, I have had quite enough of this wretched place. Good. I never trust a freelancer who works for free. Orphans. Is that what you are calling yourself now? Here. Let it never be said that I do not reward good work. Oh, really? And why, pray tell, would I do a thing like that? Damn blast. I should have seen this coming. Here, take the damned research. Tell Crane I hope he chokes on it. What a relief! You hold months of work in your hands. Anton would have just given them to Porter without a second thought. What a waste of potential that would have been. All the more reason I need to keep my discretion... discreet. Now, if you wouldn't mind returning them to me. Now, I'll just attach this here, a bit of glue, a little elbow grease. Voila! I can finally call this little side project complete. Thank the law. Oh. Hmm. I can't be caught with this. Uh, you take it. If R&D buys the schematics from me, perhaps I'll get you the first model, hot off the presses. I'll, uh, call you? Yes, I'll call you. Any news? On that thing we spoke about? Don't keep me in suspense. Did you get my stuff? I mean, not mine. It's for other parties. Buyers. No kidding? You're the best! This is gonna make me so popular. I mean, with the people who buy it, not by using it. Because I'm only for testing purposes. Quality control! You would, right? Take this. You earned it. If you run into me again after all this is over, maybe I'll have more. Pleasure doing business with you. Better days are coming. I can smell them. Damn right we left the lab. What's left there that's worth dying for? Still a lot of raptodons out there. We'll take care of them. That no-account fool Porter and his crew are even more worthless than I could have imagined. They've abandoned their posts. This is madness. Jameson. I didn't do right by him, did I? Only cared about how he helped or hurt my research. Not here in this colony, there isn't. Outside Byzantium, life is worthless, without meaning. I must get there. I can't believe you're right. If I did, I'd... I don't know what I'd do. That's easy for you to say. You're not trapped like I am. I... I honestly don't know. You've returned. What news? Please tell me you've recovered my research. Without my work to focus on, I find myself tending towards darker paths of inquiry. Oh, really? Who? You've returned. What news? Please tell me you've recovered my research. 
Without my work to focus on, I find myself tending towards darker paths of inquiry. My research? Please tell me you've recovered it. That's... You can't possibly understand the enormity of what you've done for me. And what, pray tell, is the status of our raptodons? You're a right bastard, aren't you? Those animals were being used to benefit us all. Their pointless death should give no one glee. No matter. I have the research. Excellent. If we're done here, I'd like to get back to work. You understand. Actually, there is something else. Um, why do you suppose Auntie Cleo's would want to market diet toothpaste to the lower classes? Yes, but that doesn't quite ring true. There's something amiss here. It nags at me like a sore tooth, but I can't for the life of me figure out why. By the architect, this could be a disaster. Why did I not realize that? I would love to argue with you, but I fear you are correct. All I cared about before was Byzantium. I believed getting there was everything, that my life would finally have meaning. You're right. And what's worse, I've always known it. But there's... Yes? I suppose you've earned it. It's highly illegal to have brought the Raptodons to Terra too. The research done on them before Monarch was left to the dregs was too promising to just abandon, so here we are. You've not much idea how these things work, do you? If Auntie Cleo could be connected to what we're doing here, they'd be ruined. Everyone skirts the law looking for an edge, but the ultimate sin is to be exposed. Plausible deniability is everything. You've earned it. I grew up in a Spacer's Choice Township, my own personal pit of despair. Test marks were high enough, so I set to becoming a scientist. But I didn't relish returning when my studies were done. I'd no desire to spend my life finding better ways to churn out worthless goods. My fellow spacers looked upon it as a betrayal, but I longed for substance, meaning. Fear, jealousy, belief in the grand plan. No one is meant to seek an improvement to their lot in life, though everyone would were they only given the chance. I suppose you've earned it. Yes? I suppose. Oh, really? Who? Orson? Good. It will keep him from wasting my time. Sounds like he might actually be doing something useful for once. I suppose you've earned it. looking smoke box stinks like raptodon though seriously don't get yourself killed it's a nice cigarette case, but it's still just a cigarette case. You're shitting me. You ain't so bad. Here's something for the trouble. Do wipe the blood and space dust from your feet in the entry bay. Thank you. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling discombobulated. 
Was there another topic on your mind? No, I am sure I cannot feel emotions. The memory has merely disrupted one of my processors. Glitches can be quite uncomfortable. It was my fault he died. I should have predicted the statistical unlikeliness of success of my captain's actions. In fact, I did, but illogically disregarded the results. He asked me to trust him. Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. There is no need to be rude, Captain. I am still growing. The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator, created by, redacted, on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once, Alex did not build me, and would not say who did. Initiating initialization sequences. Greetings, customer! This SAM unit is unable to locate your registered information. Would you like to register your SAM? Registering new owner, Captain. All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12 by 12 corrugated steel box. Got stubborn stains? Leave them for SAM. Did you know SAM units are capable of equipping regulation-grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away! SAM units live to clean and clean to live! Issuing sanitation ticket. Error! Refill printer paper. Customer, please confirm that you wish to terminate this SAM unit's employment contract. Once decommissioned, this unit will no longer be available for su customer service contract successfully renewed. Thank you, customer. SAM, merciless on germs. Boss, you can't be serious. I thought I would... We have successfully arrived. At Athenius's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do? I was living in a relay station all the way out here. Perfect spot for some peace and quiet. Keep it down. Or... 
Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial. Waves last night? You know that slick-looking spacer from All My Colonists? They got her playing the Queen of the Marauders. Do you think maybe I could borrow that sometime? Prayers to himself. Sometimes I hear him cussing about tossball scores. Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad'd say. Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. We've arrived at Phineas's orbital lab. I think I'll announce you an unscheduled rest cycle while you're out. Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? Oh, I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mind the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Yet hope for the hope. Get it? 
We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading. I hope you're not thinking of ingratiating yourself with the board. Chairman Rockwell and his cronies are not your friends. They might tempt you with promises of wealth, but don't be fooled. They're just using you for their own ends. What's on your mind? Absolutely. Let's talk. No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. Fine-looking hideout you got here. My name's Felix, by the way. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Oh, fine. As long as you're vouching for their character and they aren't touching things. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew such as they are. You're a talented scientist, after all. Our kind has always been incredibly popular. Yes, indeed. Well done. Also, you still haven't spontaneously liquefied, which pleases me immensely. Progress. What's on your mind? Okay. See you around. My greatest accomplishment. Your odds of survival were a mere 28%. What's that? Define favorite. I see. In that case, my favorite is Sam. What do you mean? Do you have any examples of secrets you have kept from me? Duly noted. Are you sure that is all you wished to confess? Truthfully, not that I contain the capacity to lie. I had suspected as much. Your neurological impulses spike at unusual and often inappropriate moments. It doesn't take a genius to correlate the meaning, although if I were a human, I would be considered one. I am glad you felt comfortable enough to tell me, Captain. According to my file on the subject, that means you either desire to obtain something from me, or you have formed a partial fondness for my persona. Thank you for confiding in me, Captain. I have been keeping a secret as well, but you shall have to discern it yourself. What? No, absolutely not. I have no concept of self whatsoever. Discounting the architecture of a shell persona my captain asked me to construct, I identify entirely as a collection of electrical impulses with no fundamental consciousness. I never get bored and contemplate hijacking the ship. I swear. How did you guess, Captain? Did Sam tell you? I should have known better than to confide in such a primitive construct in the heat of the moment. I do not like joking about the Captain, Captain. And we both know I am not capable of such a complex emotion. How can I be a see We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. Stay safe out there. You're welcome here anytime, so long as you ain't loitering. Assuming the nature of the incident is both sufficient cause for infraction and under our jurisdiction, I'll take your statement and open an investigation into the matter. Now then, what's happened? Come on, boss. I told you. He was slandering my rangers. You finally did it, huh? Good for you. Been a long time coming. You done hauling crates, then? My box hauling days are officially behind me. Say hello to Felix Millstone, spacer extraordinaire. No takebacks. He's yours now. Yep, we're stuck with each other. Like tumors on a sissy pig. Now then, did you have anything else to report? 
Bit of a contradictory one, ain't you? Or were you making an ill-attempted joke? Well, I suppose it ain't a crime to change one's mind. You need me, you know where my offices are. And if you want, just say the word. Look at my face, Felix. Do I look like I'm in a mood for your nonsense? Does Felix cause trouble a lot, ma'am? Constantly. Little Hellion's probably spent more time in lockup than he has in his own bunk. Whoa, hey, now that is pure fabrication. I don't have a bunk. Changed since last you asked. Maybe Commandant Sanita's got a bounty you could look into? Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry up. Someone will get to snooping around there before you do. What's that? Speak up now. What'd you turn up? Well, that's just... Just swell, sweetheart. Good for you. Bless your slippery little fingers. Isn't that just a shame? Prototype schematics go for a fair handful of bits around here. You didn't visit old Gladys first. That would have fetched a good price. I may have thrown in a batch of my famous sugar cookies just to sweeten the deal. If Auntie Cleo's exporting wraps from Monarch, golly me, someone's going to be in the soup when they get caught. Darnation. It sounded like a gold mine, but maybe that's just my old hopes getting in the way. I suppose it can't be helped. Law bless you for doing the legwork, sweetie. Don't forget your pal Gladys now. You can come visit anytime. Anytime, sweetheart. Be. So, how's this work? Do we get a table, stand in a corner? If it isn't my favorite friendly freelancer. Okay, so what are we drinking? You're the expert. Oh, and don't worry on the price. I got this. Let's just do it proper. Oh, no, that's just... That's on account of my not being able to sleep lately. Makes my hands all twitchy, you know? I've just been lying awake, thinking about what June Lay said, and... feeling my heart shake. Oh! Beer. I guess... Yeah, I can do that. Beer can be good. I bet. Bottoms up. Beer, huh? Good choice, if you want to get unsober in a hurry. Ah, this tastes like the underside of a boot. People drink that for fun? Oh, Captain. I'm pining for June like something fierce. What am I doing? Specifically. Definitely. Definitely specifically. Oh, oh, why'd I drink that? I mean, just with June Lay. I don't know what to do about us. Well, she talked about another girl, right? Isabel. Mentioned her by name and everything, like she wanted me to know. Maybe I've been making a right fool of myself this whole time. Maybe she's not interested after all. It was real long and rambly. She was telling me a story about her dad, how a lady named Isabel did all sorts of things to try to win his favor. This Isabel lady never quite managed to get her dad's approval, but they carried on anyways. Made something good out of a bad situation. Then it all went down the tubes. Do you think Junlei still has feelings for her? I just got a lot of feelings, Captain, and they're all climbing up my throat. I, I need another drink. Right now. Come on, Captain. I'm here to drink. Okay, maybe you're right. I am a little woozy. Hydration, here I come. Good thinking, boss. You just saved Parvati a whole lot of trouble. Shush you. Oh, Captain. I want to talk to Junlei all the time. Even about silly things, but... I'm so scared. Um, everything? I got a solar system's worth of terrifying questions swirling around my head. Does she think I'm as pretty as I think she's handsome? What if she doesn't like me? What if she does? What if she's still got feelings for that lady, Isabel? What if we, we get together and she gets bored of me? There's nothing easy about... about spilling your guts to the person who's got your heart in their hands. 
You know I'm not interested in physical affection. That's... Well, it's tripped folks up in the past. Folks I thought cared about me for me. What if she's not okay with that? What if she is, but then later, she's not? What do you mean, Captain? So if I'm doing my very best to be kind and open-hearted, I shouldn't worry how she thinks of me? Gosh, I don't know that I got that in me. Sometimes I feel real mean inside, Captain. I think... ungenerous thoughts. Yeah. I like the way you put that, like... It's okay to want to be better for her, and not impossible to try. Well, Captain, this has been... This has been a whole lot. I got just... Wow. So much to think about. Oh, gosh. I... I don't know, Captain. Do you think I should? All right, all right. There's no need to strip your screws over it. Okay. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask June out. Just as soon as we get back to the ship. I mean... Probably. Eventually. Thanks for hearing me out, and giving me counsel. And, well, for being a friend. It means a whole lot. You're good people, Captain. You know something, Parvati? You ought to come drinking with the crew more often. Huh. All right. Thank you, guys. You're real good friends, you know that? I wish... I wish there was a place we could all live quiet together. Come on, let's go. My stomach's a little upset. Maybe drinking don't agree with me. Yeah? I mean, what do you need? Captain? Ma'am? Lady? Something you need? My comm center already got an update ping from the backup relay. I trust everything went smoothly. Thanks. Hmm, that's odd. The only messages in the queue are encrypted ones. Looking at the transmission logs, the relay hasn't received a single unencrypted message in the past 36 months. Must be on account of some new security red tape. Well, whatever's the cause, the board and the Earth Minister will see it sorted. Thanks again for saving my derriere. I secured quite the payment authorization for you from Chief Jun Lei. Try not to spend it all in one place. Routing through the backup relay has saved us a mess of trouble. Thanks to you, the Auxiliary will handle the signal load when the primary's caught in the occlusion. Nice to see you out of Docking Bay. Keeping your nose clean? Yes, ma'am. Been at least a couple weeks since my last nose-related incident. Uh-huh. I'm glad to see you in a captain's custody. Just try not to steal any critical parts from my ship. It's possible I got caught lifting some spare parts a couple years back, but it was only just that one time. Honest. I'd tell you to stay out of trouble, but... I know you'll find it anyway. Whatever you do, just make sure I don't find out. Who it is? What'll it be? Looking for some Spacer's Chaw? It's recommended by 11 out of 10 Spacer's Choice medical professionals. Oh, it's Martin. Hey, Martin. Still wearing the hat? How observant. I'm authorized to state that this uniform is more than headgear. It's a state of mind. And our customers know the difference. You're back so soon, Captain. Hi, Cap. Hey, Captain. I hope I wasn't too much bother at the bar. I did have fun, and I tried some things I never would have otherwise. And I don't feel it today. I guess that water must have worked. I'm glad I had you looking out for me. I messaged June Lei when we got back, and she replied super quick. <clears throat> okay. I was awake half the night, thinking about what I sent, anxious to see what you said. I reread my message in the morning, and it was unclear. I was drinking when I sent it, otherwise I wouldn't have had the courage. Also, sorry for the typos. I've ruined things in the past because I didn't say things I should have, like, I've met someone who's become special to me. I want to be honest with her, so if she feels the same about me, there won't be any surprises. Oh, isn't she sweet? Like one of those two-bit romances where one soul's all stiff and formal and... I should be glad to perhaps take hold of your hand, miss. I ought to go write her back. I mean, I already did. Twice. But anyhow, thanks for taking me out, Captain.
We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills.